46. Amen. When you have it, please say amen. Wow. Look how fast that was. That was instant. Oh. You need to get on Esther's level. Esther had it. Just like that. <laughs> Matt, in the book of Matthew, correct. 2746. And of course, my word actually has Hebrew in it. Of course. My my luck, the only word that I have has that. Look, look at that. Look at his word. Look at my word. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what I had in my word. <laughs> I was like, oh, for sake, that's easy. When I read it, I was like, wait a minute. This has a different language in it. All right. Is everybody ready? Amen. <laughs> the word is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabat, sabatani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You may be seated. At first glance, when you when you get this word, I said, "Man, this is a this is a harsh word." You know, that's very unlikely of Jesus to say, "Why have you forsaken me?" Oh, can I get my uh, composition book? I'm sorry, I forgot. My, I forgot my whole message. Forgot it. Look at that. Thank you. And I take a few notes. Forsaken. I actually looked it up what the word meant. It means abandonment or deserted. And at that point I said, man, for Jesus' sake, why have you forsaken me? That that means a lot. Like, why have you abandoned me or deserted me? First thing that came to my mind was, who are you talking to? He was the only one on that cross, right? Nobody else is there with him. Who who could he be speaking to? And um I have it here. I do not know why every time I have to preach, I get nervous. I, I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but. Huh? Uh, maybe that is one. <laughs> At the moment of the, cruci of the crucifixion, we see that that Jesus was, was in pain. He, was, he had a lot of pain and suffering physically, right? We, that's what we see with our eyes. And it made me understand as humans, sometimes we need to see things. If you know we don't see it, we have to connect and relate to the situation at hand. And we had to see him suffer. We had to see him crying. We had to see him thirsty for us to understand what, what was really the severity of the situation. Uh, for those who are deputies and law enforcement, we can understand things that happen when we say, man, somebody's late for shift. We get upset. My brother Alice can understand. My wife Jessica can understand and say, man, that sucks because we know what it feels like to be late for shift. Or when somebody tells you to do something and they don't do it, that feeling, when you can relate to it, you say, man, that, that sucks. That really doesn't, it sucks, you know? And to me, we had to see Jesus on that cross. We had to see him suffer the way he did in order for us to relate to him. And that's the first thing I wanted to make you understand. It's a physical thing that we had to see. The second thing is the spiritual. What was the significance of the spiritual of him dying on the cross for us? He says, you know, in the scripture, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Hallelujah. My phone wants to act up now. <laughs> we see that when he did that, on a spiritual note, he was separating himself from his God. At that point in time when he said that, the father and the son separated. What does that show you at that point in time? That he, being Jesus Christ, was separated from the almighty, powerful God, and he was a human being. When Jesus died on that cross, he took separation, he took abandonment, being left alone on that cross. So for those of us who are abandoned as, as, as in our lives, for those of us who go through the suffering, Jesus can say, I've been through that, I went through it, I separated myself from being a holy being on that cross. So to understand your pain, to understand your needs, there's nothing that God did on this earth that he didn't pre predestine and pre-think about it to have an effect in each and every one of our lives. I don't know if anybody understands the magnitude. As I was studying this, as I was reading in the scripture, 
it made me say, wow, he understood everything that he had to do, even by him saying, why have you forsaken me? He understood why he had to say that. The meaning behind it, the impact that it was going to have in our lives years down the line, so he can say, I went through those walks. I felt forsaken. I know what desert and abandonment is. So those can come to church and say, oh, no one, I've never been loved. I've never had nobody. He had, he felt that pain. And that's why he says, and I want to make sure I get this scripture right because it's a good one. It's a good one. And Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave you or forsake you. God, being the understanding God that he, he had to take that on the cross, he took that word, put it on the cross, so we never have to be abandoned. We never have to be forsaken. Yes. My God is real. My God is so good. He did things for us to protect us from those feelings. We thought it was just a physical thing, and it was just him being hammered and him suffering for our sins. But my God always does things in threes in the Trinity. A spiritual, a symbolic, and a physical. Physically, he was, he was nailed to the cross. Spiritually, he died for our sins, and his blood covered all of our sins. And symbolic is every time when I think Christianity, every time I start to think about what I do, I picture Jesus on that cross. And it impacts me every time that I want to do something, and I say, no, you know what? Jesus died for my sins. Jesus got nailed to that cross for me. So even in everything that he does as a trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and even in his actions, I don't understand if you understand the magnitude of what God does in our lives. You know, as I start to, like I said, as I started to read and started to understand things, I said, man, why, why does everything always have to be in Trinity? We, like I said, physically we have to see and understand and connect. Spiritually, it's because we needed Jesus to do that. He intervened for us because God's wrath was going to fall upon us. And he said, no, no, no. I got the sacrifice, Father. I'll do this for my people. And he had to do that in order for us to be where we're at today. And it's symbolically is so we can see something and our faith continue to grow and understand and acknowledge who Christ is in our lives. Without a symbol sometimes, when we see NY, I think of New York Giants. When I see the Mets, I don't even have to see the word Mets. I see the symbol and I know that it stands for Mets. When Jesus died on that cross, you see right there, I don't have to say anything. You start to think things, and you start to feel things. That is symbolic of what Christianity is. Everything that he did was just for that point. So when we falter, when we fall, when we're weak, when we don't understand what God goes through, we can close our eyes and see that image. I don't know about anybody of you, I've never seen it physically. But I see it in my mind, and it's symbolic to what I stand for. And I say, Jesus, you took the ultimate sacrifice for my sins. You didn't have to. But your love and your grace poured upon me so I'd be able to be here today to worship you, Lord Father God. I don't I don't think y'all understand what's going on. I, I don't think I don't think so. Praise be to Jesus, hallelujah. Yes. And I know my time is running short, so with this I close. Simply put, without Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. No one would have eternal life. Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's in John 14, 6. So we understand in his scriptures, it would pre predestined that this was going to happen. No one shall see the Father except through me. No one shall see the Father except through my sacrifice. Yes. No one will see the Father yes. until I shed my blood for them. Yes. So this was already pre pre-done, pre pre-planned out and understood yes. my God, it, it's not just a good Friday, it's just not Easter Sunday I don't think people understand the magnitude, yes. you know, I talk to non-believers and they say, what, what proof do you have that Jesus exists when I see something being told to me before and then being done and then seeing the future to me, that's, that's amazing yeah. even before we even see anything happen, he had this already planned out and then the scripture confirms what he did way before his birth, way before that. And that, to me, is proof that God is real. When God speaks before we even see it happen, and then it happens two weeks later, you're like, wow, God is real. What happened to me, I think it was last Sunday, before my father spoke to me, God told me what my pastor just told me two seconds later. He told me that. And then he confirmed what he just told me in my heart. 
And, I, and, it, and it, it, I didn't get shocked because I know when my God speaks to me. And I, and I feel it in my heart when the Lord speaks to me. So what he did was just confirm what the Lord had for me. And I, what's, what's even funnier is I already knew this way before. And me being hard-headed that I am, not acknowledging who Christ is, proved to me once yet again who God is in my life. So when we doubt, when we say, Lord, I don't want to, God confirms and confirms and confirms. So I got the word forsaken. Just to prove a point that we are never forsaken. We are never left alone in this world. All we have to do is acknowledge who Christ is in our lives and he's there for us. There's no sin that God can't say, I, I have you for this. I will, I will forgive you. Walk with me. We just have to take the first step and accept who he is in our lives. And I pray to God that you accept this message. And I'm sorry it's not bilingual. But I have to speak the word the way it comes out and it's flows. All right? So uh, I think it's Sister Jessica again. God bless you all.